This similar has a lot of NPCs, and this makes sense since NPCs in the game are meant as quest lines to help players along, give them good rewards, and also sort of act as the backbone for the lore within the game. And so it makes sense that there's been tons of NPCs released over time, and because there has been lots of NPCs with a variety of different structures to them, there's been the occasional NPC that's been released and has been much worse than what you'd normally expect. And so for this video, we'll be going over the five worst questlines in the game. These questlines will be the ones that take too long and don't give good rewards, or just are otherwise not very fun for new players to do, and detract overall from the going through the game. Now, starting off with the fifth worst NPC in the game, we're going to have Shelly. Now, this is a common pick for the worst NPC in the game, since it is super long and a lot of people try to do it, since it does give additional pet slot, which is really helpful for grinding and gives you a little bit of boost to your progression. Because it does give you something useful, even though it is super long, I consider this not as bad as some of the other ones going forward. And even though some of the quests in the quest line do require you to get 50 rare ghosts at a time, it's not much compared to some of the other quest lines we'll be getting to later. Now for fourth place on this list, we have a three-way tie going to Ghost Hunter Blaze, Ghost Hunter Luna, and Ghost Hunter Jax. These three got grouped together since they do give very similar rewards, giving both a godly pet and a godly board for a longish questline. Since they're mainly used for lore in the game, it makes sense that they are very similarly structured and also kind of long since their main reward is the lore you gain from doing them. Because their quests are so long and the rewards other than the lore are not very good, it's easy to see why new players don't really like them and end up, once they do complete them, being kind of annoyed at the littleness of the reward. For instance, Ghost Hunter Jax has you at one point six boxes, which is very similar to Yoko, but since it does only give a godly pet that was structured stat-wise for a way earlier part of the game, players don't even generally care about this questline. Now in number third spot, or for the worst questline, we have Ghost Hunter Dylan. This is one of the NPCs that are right at the beginning of the game for players, and I feel like is worse than the other ones that give bad pets. Really takes a lot of time to do, and for new players end up getting actually stuck on the questline quite a bit. So it's super difficult and it takes away time that players could be using for grinding more effective stuff. I just feel like it is way worse than Blaze or Luna, which you get to later when you when you do understand how the game works, and you can just kind of skip if you don't want to most of the time. And it seems to portray to be a much better pet since it is giving a mythical, but since its stats are super outdated and the stuff that you're doing is actually really easy for endgame players to do, I feel like it comes in at number three. Now up next we have another one that many people expect to see on a worst NPC in this game list, and that would be Ghost Under Billy. Now this quest has been infamously hard and not worthwhile to do since its perk that it gives is very useless for high game players and for new players the quest is super hard to do. This is mainly due to where it's placed in the back door, seeing how it is positioned right at that point where things are getting super hard to progress antenna wise since you only get one from each drops. And because of this you have going through a hard time for upgrading your antenna and then you also have to do quests along the way. But it also has something to do with how it's quest is structured. For instance, whereas Riley and Rowan both have easier quests right at the end, Ghost Under Billy actually has much more difficult quests, requiring quite a few rare ghosts rather than Riley who required quite a few normal ghosts, and Rowan who required a few less rare ghosts. And because of this, Billy comes in number two for this quest. Now the worst quest line in this game is actually a grouping of four quest lines that I put together, and that would be the infinite quest lines. Now these quest lines on the surface don't appear to be that bad since some of them don't take too long to do and you think eh, the gems that people get will probably be worthwhile but when you start looking into them you realize that the gems that they give or the other rewards that they have for the amount of stuff you do isn't even com comparable to the rewards that you get from the progression quest lines so you're much better off making progression rather than trying to do an infinite quest line and then along with that the, these NPCs don't really serve too much of a purpose for lore, and as I said, the rewards are- and those are all the five worst quest lines that I think are in Ghost Simulator. If you have any suggestions on ones that are also bad, or have the different theories on some of these ones that I've listed, feel free to share them in the comments. I'll be reading over those and um, maybe amending some of my positions that I made in this video, um, but 
if you guys are progressing through Ghost and Lick, feel free to skip all these quest lines since they are not worthwhile. And I will see you guys in my next video.